what happened in that meeting and what it all means later on the program. But earlier as well, I spoke to the Assistant Minister of the Treasurer, Michael Suka. House prices in Australia coming off a bit now. What does that mean for government policy and the next fight at the election? Here he was. Michael Suga, thanks for your time. Now, housing uh, is one of your areas, effectively. We do have prices coming off, it seems, around the nation, particularly Melbourne and Sydney. Is this good news for affordability? Well, yes, Tom. Prices have eased, uh, particularly on the eastern seaboard. Um, you know, the two hotspots really were Sydney and Melbourne and, to a lesser extent, South East Queensland. We've seen those come off uh, for a range of reasons, but including... Uh, the very targeted and comprehensive housing affordability package that we brought forward last year in conjunction with um, some very calibrated and targeted changes to investor-only loans uh, and to interest-only loans. So, you know, in the end, we'd like to see, Tom, a market that uh, is steady, uh, that grows at a pretty steady pace. Uh, we don't want to see a major correction, but uh, certainly seeing easing prices uh, on the eastern seaboard of Australia particularly, uh, is good for affordability. Just on not wanting to see a correction though, I mean we saw the peak house price, average house price in Sydney hit $1.2 million. Would a correction there be, be so bad if it's a measured one and it happens gradually over two, three, four years, it goes down 10%, is that a, a good thing for the whole economy? Well I think most uh, economists would say given that uh, for the vast majority of Australians, the biggest single asset that they will ever hold is their home and the equity that they hold in their home. That uh, if, as you saw in the United States a few years ago, uh, significant corrections to housing markets, it does have flow on impacts into the economy, quite negative impacts into the economy. So what we'd like to see is uh, very steady plateauing uh, growth. Uh, and I think given the period we've just had in relation to quite significant growth, as I said, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, um, seeing that uh, uh, with no growth uh, for a period of time is not necessarily a bad thing. But I don't think uh, for the broader health of the economy, for the broader health of the many hundreds of thousands of people who are employed in construction uh, and related industries, that you'd want to see anything akin to uh, what we saw in the United States or indeed other places where there have been significant falls in house prices. And the reality is that does have significant flow on effects into the broader economy. So uh, I think in short, no, uh, in short time you wouldn't want to see a significant uh, reduction in house prices. I guess the, the thing about it is Australia has very expensive housing. I don't think anyone would debate that. What you're basically saying is for the good of the economy, we can't really uh, go back on that. That's, um, that element of the economy is already sort of locked in. Well, what I'm saying, Tom, is what you don't want to see is significant reductions in house values. I mean, that's, uh, I think, uh, a self-evident point. I think we've seen from other jurisdictions, if you have significant reductions in house values, uh, not only does it do bad things for uh, household wealth, but it has flow on impacts into the broader economy. You've got to remember there are many hundreds of thousands of people who are connected to uh, residential uh, and indeed commercial construction uh, and you want to continue to see um, investment flow into that area of the market. Uh, really what the Treasurer and I said last year with the housing affordability package is the way that you address uh, housing affordability issues uh, is in a, in a sense to uh, get more housing dwellings on the ground uh, and the more of those that you can make available and the more that you can encourage that to occur, uh, downward, pressure on, uh, downward pressure on prices. And in addition to that, where you do see from time to time fluctuations in the market or heat in the market, an overheated market, as arguably we saw with uh, investor loans and interest only loans, you don't take a sledgehammer to the market like the Labor Party's approaching, uh, like the Labor Party's proposing. You take an approach that's targeted, that's calibrated, uh, as we did last year, where we uh, limited the amount of investor loans, where we limited the amount of interest only loans, and we think that's played a huge role in taking the heat out of the market. You mentioned the Labor approach. I know there's a report this week that cites perhaps it could 
cost up to 12% in terms of uh, house prices going off, depending on what city, it was very different depending on what city you're in, and I know Labor disputes that, but are we going to see uh, the Coalition and you particularly ramp up this campaign against Labor because it didn't end up being a huge part of the 2016 election? Yeah, Tom, I think, uh, you know, Labor's um, being very badly exposed here. I mean, they tried to masquerade a tax grab with their housing taxes as some sort of housing affordability policy. Uh, I think the, you know, Chris Bowen and, the Bo and his team sat around in a room and said, how do we sell housing taxes to the Australian public? Oh, well, we'll sell them by trying to uh, masquerade them as housing affordability policies. Clearly they're not. They're not housing affordability policies. They're uh, just a litany of additional taxes, whether that's the negative gearing changes, whether that's doubling capital gains tax. Uh, all, these, uh, all those policies will do uh, is push up rents. Uh, we know it'll push up rents for the 30% of people who rent. Their rents will go up if Labor's policy uh, was ultimately put forward. Uh, we also know it will reduce uh, the amount of new homes into the market because it's self-evident and study after study shows this, Tom, that if you tax something more, you get less of it. And if you tax housing more, there'll be less houses built. And the third and quite perverse part of this policy from the Labor Party is they want to quarantine tax benefits for new housing, which means no longer will first home buyers uh, who are the people who typically are the ones that buy in the new estates or buy in the new, de new developments, no longer will they ever get a look in in those developments. Or new Michael Suka there, and you 